Now you'll see on the slide there, you're a mass of energy in a high speed of vibration. You operate on a very high frequency. You're moving so fast, you appear to be still. But I'm going to tell you, nothing about you is still. It's moving at a very, very high speed. If we were to photograph your body with Curlium photography, that's the way you would look. Your body would be a glistening, radiating, gleaming form. Semyon Curlian, back in 1934, perfected a form of photography that'll photograph the energy leaving the body. It'll penetrate the camera, penetrate the film. That's what Curlian photography is. It's named after the author of the... That's how you and I look, in truth. If you were to stand in front of an infrared television camera in a completely dark room, you would be a glistening, radiating, gleaming form. Now, let's think. A frequency is a level of vibration. Okay? There's an infinite number of frequencies. There's no end to them. Everything you see... This is paper. We call it paper because of the speed it's moving at. At one time, it was called wood. Okay? We call it wood because of the speed it was moving at. We talked yesterday where you take water. We call it water. It's energy because of the speed it's vibrating at. And we put heat to it. Then we call it steam. It's the same energy. You saw here how energy transferred. Tapped his shoulder. She felt it. These are not accidents. Now look here for a moment. Let all these lines represent levels of vibration. There's an infinite number. Every frequency is hooked up to the one above and the one below. There's no line of demarcation where one stops and the other starts. Now, if you understand this in depth, that means everything in this universe is connected. There is only one power. It manifests in many different forms. We think we're different. We only appear to be different. We're not different at all. We're all exactly the same. We just do different things. We think different thoughts. We're involved in different ideas. But we are all connected. And I think when we really get that straight in our mind, a lot of the problems that we have go away. Einstein said the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The rational mind is a faithful servant. We've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. You see, you've got all those higher faculties, perception, the will, imagination, reason, intuition, and the will. They're, they're totally different than any other form of life. All the other little forms of life operate by instinct, which is perfect. They go by what they see, hear, smell, taste, touch. This is so important we start to understand this in some depth. We're going to use these higher faculties to start doing the things we want to do. Now, what we want to do is control the flow of thought energy. We want to let it flow freely to and through us, improving everything with which it connects. See, when it flows into us, it has no form. We give it form. We give it direction. And it's important that we start to understand this. Let's suppose that X represents where you are. That represents you, where you are in your life right now. You have the ability to take a very honest look at your life and see how you got there. Everything that's happened is recorded in your mind. And you can look back and you can see how one thing led to another, which led to another, which led to another. You met this person, you met that person, you moved here, you lived there, you went to work here. And you'll see <coughs> in your mind how you got to where you are. Because you can look back at it. Now when you go to look ahead, you say, that's where I want to go. This is the dream that comes into your mind and you quickly get rid of it 
because you don't know how to get there. When we think of something, when it comes to our mind, let's understand nothing is created or destroyed. We've tuned into something that already is. And rather than let it go, what we want to understand is that there is a place. Yet it's a frequency that we tuned in on, way beyond where we're at in our own consciousness. If we can see it in our mind, we can hold it in our hand. We don't want to just let it go. Let's realize if we can see it in our mind, we can hold it in our hand. There is where I want to go. There is a place. This is real. This isn't just some fancy idea. That's why Von Braun told Kennedy, President Kennedy, it would take the will to do it. The ability to focus on that idea, to stick to your knitting, as I say, focus on that idea to the exclusion of all the other nonsense that's coming at you. Don't pay any attention to the people who tell you why you can't. You can stay focused. The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. That's a state there. Now, you see, if you don't believe it, you let it go. However, the moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. This union results in the activation and projection of plots, plans, conditions, and circumstances. All kinds of things start to fun happen in our life. When we fuse with that idea, do you remember when you made the decision to do the Doggy Academy? All the crazy things that started to happen for you when you made the decision. They didn't happen before that. Some of you to get here, when you made a decision to get here, all kinds of things started to happen. And you're here. We gotta, we gotta start to understand this. The moment your belief matches with any state. Well, how do we start to believe it? Well, we've gotta understand that when we see something, it's not just something, it's a place. There is a place. It's a frequency. When we get on that frequency, all kinds of things start to happen. This new state of conscious awareness becomes our home from which we view the world. Act like the person you want to become. William James called it the actor's technique. Act like you're already there. It's your workshop, and if you're observant, you'll see outer reality shaping itself upon the model of your imagination. This is so powerful. You're a creative being. How did he create that illusion in his mind? When you move on to a higher frequency, you're going to be communicating with a world that's totally foreign to and beyond the reach of your five senses. Now, until we start studying this, we go by what we hear, see, smell, taste, touch. We've got to get away from that. We really have to start to understand. When you move on to a higher frequency, that's when you start using your higher faculties. You don't go by what you hear, see, smell, taste, touch. You go by what you can see in your mind nobody else can see. Now there is a place. Steve Jobs made it very clear. He said you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust the dots will somehow connect in the future. You've got to know that you can go there. Yet when you start, everything will start to happen for you. And one thing after another will start to happen. And pretty soon, you find yourself there. It's done. And when you get there, you're going to start to become aware that you could have gone there. 
Isn't that a bitch? <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? When you get there, you'll realize you could have gone there. You've got to control the flow of the thought energy. You've got to let it flow freely. You can't entertain a lot of doubt and worry. It won't work. Okay? To move to a considerably higher frequency of thought, you must first consent. It's got to be your decision. Then you've got to adapt to the ideas and feelings this new frequency represents. So you see, it's not good enough just to read it in the book or listen to me talk about it. This is where you've got to do it. This is where you've got to do it. Here. The future must become the present in the imagination of the one who would wisely and consciously create circumstance. We must translate vision into being thinking of into thinking from. Imagination must center itself upon some state and then view the world from that state. That's what we're talking about here. To move to a higher frequency, you've got to consent. In other words, your decision. I couldn't do you. I couldn't take you there. Only you can go there. Then you have to adapt to the ideas and feelings the new fre frequency represents. Then you're operating from intuition. You're not operating from what you can see with your eyes because it's not manifest yet. At the suggestion of a move, though, your paradigm is instantly going to put up a royal battle. All hell's going to break loose inside and will continually fight you. You must take conscious control over the paradigm, remove and replace it. You see, when this crazy feeling takes over inside, you've got to understand what is taking over. You've got to understand what's causing you the problem. And you have to take control. You cannot let the paradigm control you. That's where that feeling inside, it starts to create doubt, starts to create fear, all kinds of nonsense. You've got to understand, it's like a person inside that's against you. That's really what it's like. It's like a person that's inside talking to you, and it's against you. It's a program. It's a paradigm. And it talks to your consciousness when you're alone, when you're laying in bed or getting up in the morning, or maybe when you're standing in the shower. And it's telling you why you can't do it. You don't have the money. You don't know how. You're never going to get somebody to believe in this. All those ideas are going to flow into your mind. That's what the paradigm does to you. You can ask yourself, what do you really want to do? Okay. Now I'm going to ask you to take a few minutes, turn your chair in on the table, and talk to each other about what we've just covered here. Carry on a conversation about it. Talk about these frequencies. What did you hear there? Remember we pointed out? You've got to live there. You've got to see the world from there. And you're not using your physical senses. You're using your higher faculties. Okay? Let me have your attention for a moment. Hello, hello. All right, now go back to the screen here for a moment. When you go ahead, and you look at that space, or look at what it is you want. We refer to that as a C-type goal. It's a goal that you don't know how to get there. 
Now, what do you do? I want, this is what I want you to talk about for the next 10, 15 minutes. I want you to share with the group, what do you do to attempt to keep that C-type goal in your mind as if in present tense with all the nonsense going on around you? With the problems that you're facing? Maybe the lack of money or the loved ones telling you you're crazy, you're wasting your time, get a job. What do you do? That's what I want you to talk about. I want you to talk about strategies that you can follow that will help you maintain the strength and the will to keep going towards that one thing. Now, I've been doing this for a long enough period of time to know that every one of us gets doubts. And start to question whether we can ever do this or not. Because you're going to run into real tough times. If your goal is big enough, the problems are going to be big. And so you got to keep going. I think I mentioned, I'm not sure if I mentioned here or not, Milt Campbell was a very good friend of mine. Milt had a key to our house. Whenever he came to Toronto, he could go there. It didn't matter whether we were there or not. He won the silver medal in Helsinki in 1952 in the decathlon. He was going for a gold. Bob Mathias had won it in 48, and he won it again in 52. So Milt was standing on the second step with Mathias on the first step. He said, I made up my mind four years from now, I would come back and I would get the gold. Four years later, he and Rayford Johnson were running through the Olympic Village down in Melbourne, Australia. And Rayford said to Milt, what do you think is going to happen? Milt said, Rayford, you've wasted your time coming here. This one's mine. <laughs> now, when, in 52, when he made a commitment to do that, that meant he was going to have to train every day, or every day for four years. They compete in 10 different events. The decathlon must be grueling. He didn't have the money. But he made the commitment. When you make the commitment, when it's, it's not just something you hope can happen, something you wish could happen. When you make a commitment, you don't do it if it's convenient, you do it regardless. There's a difference. He got the idea, he went to the American government and said, listen, I'll run under your colors, I'll join the service, if you send me to a warm climate and give me a damn good coach. He was from Plainfield, New Jersey, but he ended up spending the next four years in San Diego with a good coach. He was being looked after because the idea came to him. But he didn't have the idea when he made the commitment. If your goal's big enough, you're gonna run into a couple of mountains. And you've gotta just treat it as necessary because it's the mountains that strengthen you. It's the problems you have that strengthen you. Now what do you do? That's what I want you to talk about. When you hit these walls, what do you do? Because you may have an idea that'll help somebody else at the table. Go ahead. I hope you enjoyed this video. We put a lot of good information up here and it causes everything in your life to get better. If you'd like us to notify you every time we put a new video up, hit subscribe and then turn on notifications. Check out all our videos and we will notify you when we put a new one up.